At the World Economic Forum meet, and certainly on the sidelines in Davos, Switzerland, artificial intelligence, the future of um, digital infrastructure rollouts, technology at so many levels, are some of the key issues being raised. We've got a wonderful guest with us, the Minister Ashwini Vaishnav. Thanks Hello. very much. Uh, besides being Minister, these are themes that genuinely interest you, excite you as well. One of the key issues uh, for India going forward will be uh, semiconductors. Um, and resilient supply chains, obviously. How is that key to some of our future plans? So semiconductor is a foundational technology. Everybody here at DevOps is like, they are people, senior people who are really concerned about the resiliency of supply chain. Semiconductors go into practically everything that we manufacture these days. So there is a lot of excitement about India's entry into the semiconductor industry. People appreciate the focus on talent that we have done. The industry leaders appreciate the focus on design that we have done. People say that the first few steps that India has taken are the absolutely the right steps. People are very happy with the progress of the Micron plant because within 90 days flat, the construction began. So that's, a, that's something which is giving a lot of confidence to the world, to the global semiconductor industry. Yeah. Uh, from a geostrategic standpoint, this is also critical, isn't it? Because um, the availability of semiconductors has been limited to a couple of countries. We have a huge demand and we want to ensure that it is available for our industry when we need it. Absolutely. And that's why we have put so clear focus on developing a comprehensive ecosystem for semiconductors. And we have been uh, supported and helped by some of the topmost leaders in this field across the world as part who have become members of the India Semiconductor Mission. So that is giving us very good uh, and today the, the interactions I've had with the industry leaders, they believe that this is the time when you can take the next leap. The next leap is basically starting projects to design some of the key chips that are needed in today's world. For example, for telecom, for example, for processor, for example, can you decide, can you start working on your own GPU? Mm. That these are the kind of inputs which are coming from the industry. Mm. That shows the level of confidence which mm. industry has on India. And so this is something which India would be able to supply to the world, not just our industry going forward. Absolutely. Indian designed uh, GPUs, uh, semiconductors, um, uh, and, and a lot of that displays, yeah. for example, going out. So it would also set up a huge ecosystem in India with the generation of thousands of jobs. Absolutely. This is a global industry. Yes. What you design and manufacture in India can be used anywhere in the world. And given the geopolitical uh, strategies and constraints which people are feeling all over the world, people have huge trust. The global industry has huge trust on India. And that's where Prime Minister Modiji's work on the foreign policy and the kind of trust he has developed across the world has really played out. So that trust is very important. So the issue, uh, one of the key themes in Davos this year is artificial intelligence. But the question which a lot of people have back home certainly is that, you know, if there is more AI, then it means that there may be fewer jobs or people will be retrenched. How would you address this concern? There are uh, two aspects of every technology that comes in. There will be transitions in the industry basis, the new technology. So a lot of productivity gains will be there. There will be lots and lots of complex challenges which can be addressed, for example, climate change, for example, new drug discovery, for example, disease uh, prevention, for example, getting earlier detection of uh, diseases. All those things are, for example, agriculture. So these are the things in which uh, AI can play a very positive role. Yes, there will be other negative aspects of the technology, like every other technology, when it comes, it will have. What we need to do is we have to see how can we harness the positive things and how can we save our society and the country and the economy from the negative side. Regulation is important not just within India but around the world as well because when we talk about AI we are talking about extremely advanced systems. Uh, we are talking about potential dangers which we have not even foreseen. Um, is this something that concerns you given the pace at which the technology is developing? Absolutely. Regulation of AI is today a very important topic discussed everywhere in practically every forum. Globally, there are concerns about copyright, there are concerns about the content which is getting created, there are concerns about, concerns about racial bias, there are concerns about deep fakes, there are concerns about 
identity theft. Mm. So these are the concerns around which regulation is getting built, getting mm. developed. Um, we are part of the global uh, thinking process. Mm. We chaired the GPA, mm. which is basically a body of uh, like uh, a very large number of almost 28 mm. countries mm. are part are members of that. And our thinking, which balances innovation and regulation, has been widely appreciated and widely acknowledged. You spoke about deep fakes. I'll just touch upon it. It is a huge concern. The Prime Minister is personally worried about this. Um, how is the legislation that we are now pushing out and the rules that we are now pushing out designed to ensure that people are protected? That's what you are basically intending to do at so many levels, whether it's children, uh, uh, public faces, anybody else. The idea is to protect citizens. Absolutely. And uh, for that, multiple things have uh, been done so far uh, within the uh, IT Act and the rules under it. There are provisions which can help us uh, prevent any identity theft. We have also had lots of workshops with the industry, with the platforms, and the platforms are taking responsibility, but I think they need to do much more than this. They need to deploy technologies where defects can be detected, and there are technologies available today. They need to deploy those in good, uh, good quantity and good frequency. Um, time has come when the platforms should start taking responsibility for what they are publishing. The way uh, the uh, print industry involved, the way the newspaper industry involved, similar structures are needed in the uh, similar structures are needed in the social media platform industry also. So what is the timeline for the benefit of our viewers that you have set? Uh, whether you know I mean whether it's Twitter, whether it is uh, you know any of these uh, platforms to say that look YouTube, Facebook that you have to now get this uh, your act together people need to be protected now you need to take out what is fake we have to do it today we cannot be living Why with the delay if the technology exists so that's where the social media platforms have to play a bigger role and they are we are we are kind of continuously pushing them i also think that maybe time has come when we need a new legal framework for this because the legal framework right now we are working under is uh, the it act and we had started the uh, process of drafting the new Digital India Bill and of course it requires a lot more consultation, a lot more uh, work with the industry and other stakeholders. So we will be doing that and uh, hopefully after the new government is formed, we should come out with a full-fledged new digital regulation on this. When we speak about India's own digital backbone, obviously security and, and, um, and, and privacy is key to all of that. Yeah. When you meet people over here and we talk about the India story, how is this an important aspect that is covered, that you know, privacy is key to anything that we do? Absolutely, and people really appreciate our DPDP Act because our framework is very different from the two other extremes where basically there is one extreme where it's purely less fair, right? You do whatever you want to do. Uh, there is another regulation which has practically killed innovation and... Uh, absolutely created a structure which is, okay, everything is controlled. Uh, our framework is a framework where innovation and regulation are highly balanced and that is being appreciated all over the world. I also hear a lot of uh, questions here in uh, Davos about uh, the development of technologies and people are highly interested in the way our telecom technology has been developed. The, I see keen interest from many countries who, want, who would like to import it. Mm. I also see a lot of uh, interest on the economic growth. Mm. The growth story is something which people really are very keen to understand and I've had multiple sessions by now where Prime Minister Modi's vision and the way he has managed the economy, the way he has brought the economy out of the COVID uh, difficult period, all those things are highly appreciated. And the growth story of 6 to 8 percent consistent growth rate, moderate inflation, that is being uh, highly, that is high, highly appreciated here. Uh, India, like any other major economy, is um, a potentially a victim of cyber attacks. These are external factors, um, or lots of, uh, you know, there's the dark web out there, a lot of uh, actors who are present. Is this something that, you know, you're very actively working to defend? We've seen, for example, power plants in the past we targeted, etc., etc. Then, you know, there's that concern on data being leaked. So, 
could you share with us a little bit about what we are doing there's continuous work uh, going on in that field uh, we have a structure at the national level where uh, threats practically running into millions we are successfully able to thwart them we are success successfully able to uh, stop them and at organizational level lots of initiatives have happened which are very effective today we need lot of uh, change in behavior at the user level which basically means some basic hygiene stuff and taking that extra care which is needed in today's world a final question uh, put on your hat as railway minister now you had an interesting uh, conversation with what swiss railways yesterday yeah <laughs> and this had something to do with the pace of of railroad construction rail uh, rail line construction yeah. so tell us a little bit about that so i visited the swiss railways control center yesterday and uh, had lot of interactions with the top management um they are really really excited at the pace of railway construction in india what is the roll out of kavach now in india what percentage of say passenger trains or goods trains or routes are covered by that see the entire world moved to automatic train protection in 1990s the governments of those days they never had any interest in getting the new technologies it's in 2016 for the first time that we had a automatic train protection system approved 2016 we did the first trials and it's a very very uh, the system approval process is a very meticulous it's called SIL 4 level SIL 4 so where you don't permit a permit a single error in thousands right. of uh, operations right so that kind of uh, uh, process happened 2019 is when the certification yeah Uh, got done yeah and 2020 21 were basically covid years mm. and now we have uh, now we are right now implementing it on 1500 kilometers mm -hmm. and uh, very soon we'll be taking out the next uh, project for 6000 kilometers all right well wonderful thank you so much minister for uh, you know sharing your thoughts on, on so many issues it's been a an interesting uh, wef and davos for all of us uh, visiting from india thank you very much for thank speaking you. to us thank you, thank you sir thank you.